Dear President Obama, we, the people, have stated resolutely we reject your vision for our country. You claim you have not heard us. We, the people, have assembled across America resisting your efforts to subvert our Constitution and undermine our liberty. You claim you have not seen us. Since you have not acknowledged our message, let us here present it once more. For if, as President Wilson said, a leader's ear must ring with the voices of the people, the time has come. Our greatest treasure is freedom, the absence of restraints on our ability to think and to act. The corollary of freedom is individual responsibility. We believe in the power of the individual. A few years ago, President Bush said, history moves toward freedom because the desire for freedom is written in every human heart. Let us add that we will preserve it only as long as devotion to freedom is expressed in the heart of our actions. When President Lincoln dedicated Gettysburg National Cemetery, he declared, it is for us, the living, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus so nobly advanced. That unfinished cause for which our soldiers willingly go to battle and for which so many have given their lives is a free United States of America. It has been nearly 150 years and the work President Lincoln spoke of is not finished. In fact, that work will never be finished. Freedom is the capacity for self-determination. It is not an entity, but a condition, and conditions change. Freedom can expand, yet so can it contract. You promised change when you took office, Mr. President, but subjugation is not change we wanted or will accept. You have expanded government, violated our Constitution, confounded laws, seized private industry, destroyed jobs, perverted our economy, curtailed free speech, corrupted our currency, weakened our national security, and endangered our sovereignty. By compromising our nation's cultural, legal, and economic institutions, you are ensuring that our children will never achieve the same quality of life as we enjoy today. Through generational theft, you are robbing the unborn of opportunity. This is not acceptable, not in America. We did not become a strong nation through hope, but rather through self-reliance. No one better understands the relationship between individual achievement, dignity, and strength than our armed forces. Through every war, our soldiers have held this nation's destiny in their hands. They have not failed us. They cherish freedom enough that they are willing to die for it. Our duty to them and to ourselves is to treasure freedom enough to live up to it. We accept the challenge, Mr. President. That is why we are assembling across the land to deliver our message to you as often and in every way we can. Dismiss us at your political peril. Our great nation is a republic. We will not accept tyranny under any guise. Your policy to redistribute the fruits of our labor is statism and will not be tolerated. By our honor, Mr. President, we vow forever to resist coercive government in America. Patriots will not stand silent as you attempt to dismantle the greatest nation on earth. We, the people, will defend our liberty we will protect our beloved country, and America's exceptionalism will prevail. God bless the United States of America. Sincerely, we the people.